We are at Nationals Park, as we told you right off the top. It is Dylan Cruz night here. The Nationals are giving away 10,000 Dylan Cruz debut T-shirts. In fact, Danny, grab that one over there behind you. I want to show yep. the 106.7 The Fan YouTube stream where people are watching the show today. Of course, you're listening on the Odyssey app all over the country or in the DMV on 106.7 The Fan, our flagship. But these shirts are gorgeous. Uh, they say, welcome to the show, Dylan Cruz. Let's go Nats with the G-E-A-U-X LSU style. Go Tigers. Uh, they're really well done. They did the same thing for James Wood, which mm -hmm. I thought was a smash hit. And it's a really, really cool idea. They don't have to do that. People are going to come or they're not going to come. A lot of folks are going to buy tickets to see Dylan Cruz's first game with or without a giveaway. But just to reward some of your diehards that are coming out to see the kid that have been excited for months. Love that. I just think it's a nice touch. Me too. And there aren't enough nights like this for fans at this ballpark where it's really exciting to come here. Uh, I was joking with uh, legend in the D.C. sports biz, David Aldridge, last night over at the Commanders game. Uh, we were at the field. The old X. The X, the Nubs field. And uh, he walked into the Josh Harris presser, and we're sitting there a couple seats apart, and he said, you going to Nats Park tomorrow night? I said, absolutely, wouldn't miss it. And we kind of both thought about how funny it is to say that here in late August of a lost season in the middle of a rebuild, because mm -hmm. there's just not a whole lot of days like this where generally right now being a Nats fan is a kind of have-to proposition. Today's a get-to gig. You don't have to go to the game. You get to go to the game to see Dylan Cruz. And I love these T-shirts. I love that they did it. Very well put. I mean, just to, to say it this way, there are, I think there are four murals or, you know, big uh, pictures, posters of guys. When you're in around Nats Park, sort of you can look up and, and see, the, like, whatever. There are 50-foot tall uh, big pictures of guys. One's Davey Martinez. Uh, one is Je Josiah Gray, who's not playing this year. One's Lane Thomas, who doesn't play here anymore. And the other is C.J. Abrams. And I'm not saying that to, to, to make fun or be disrespectful. I'm telling you, that's the point is the future is the, is the selling point. The, the next thing, the, the horizon, where a year and a half ago, you had to really squint. You go, well, if C.J. Abrams hits, well, if, uh, you know, if James Wood, it, it continues to improve. Maybe Elijah Green starts making more contact. Mackenzie Gore figures it out. And this and this and this. And now you don't have to squint as hard. You can see it. You can see a move or two. You can see some of the development uh, of these guys. You can see a, a pleasant surprise. A guy like Luis Garcia uh, step into his own and be a bona fide major leaguer who's having a really nice season. And you kind of add it up a little bit. You go, it's not distant anymore. It's still in the future, but it's not forever like it may have felt a year and a half ago, two years ago. Well, to your point, those big building-like posters that take up the entire height of the parking garages, mm -hmm. Next year, one of those will be James Wood. One of those is going to be Dylan Cruz. And then one is probably going to be C.J. Abrams or perhaps Mackenzie Gore or whatever pitcher they go get. But at least two of the three or four are going to be the guys that graduated this year. Uh, it should be noted, I think, and, and this needs to be discussed before the debut. When James Wood came up, he had dominated in the minor leagues. James Wood had been the best player in AAA and arguably the best player in minor league baseball at the moment of his promotion. And it stood to reason, based on the quality of his at-bats, the on-base percentage, you know how he was swinging it, that he was going to have a chance to have some immediate success at the major league level. Now, even by my lofty expectations, in a year in which the gap has grown between AAA and the big leagues exponentially, I didn't think he'd be as good as he's been this season. He's hitting 284 with an 822 OPS. He draws a ton of walks. He's already probably the best player in the lineup, and he's certainly the most feared hitter on this team. But I think if that is kind of what we're used to this season with one of the big promotions where they gave away T-shirts, there's got to be some tamping down of expectations slightly for Cruz, which isn't to knock Dylan, who's been very solid in the minor leagues, but it has not been James Wood dominant, right? Wood has elite power. Wood has what looks to me to be like MVP potential with some of what he's been able to do at the high minors. Cruz, who was in college just a year ago, yeah. won the College World Series at LSU 13 months ago, was drafted number two overall a little over 12 months ago, has been in the minor leagues now, whereas James Wood's been doing it for better part of three years as a pro. Dylan Cruz has been doing it for a few hours, right? To get to the big leagues this fast, to play the way that he did, where over a buck 62, he was on pace for you know 25 homers and 40 plus steals or something. Some very solid power, speed numbers. He's a terrific defensive center fielder who they'll move to right field now in the major leagues, which is where he was for the last few weeks at Rochester while he was getting ready. But I just don't think people should expect him to be what Wood has been so far, where 
he immediately hits. It's immediately a big impact. It's going to be a transition, and they're giving him these 31 games that are low stakes, Danny, mm-hmm. to get his feet wet, to go into the offseason, let's see what you got to work on, and then let's give him a chance to try to make the, the big club out of spring training next year. Maybe he starts at AAA for a little while, and they call him up quickly. But I don't think that this is James Wood 2.0. I think the minor league – Performance kind of indicates that. Yeah, I mean, and there there aren't many James Woods. There aren't many Juan Sotos, right? That's lightning striking. This is this is if there is such a thing, a more normal course of events, and it's still not normal. He's still way ahead of uh, where he should be at this age and stage. Because you mentioned it, uh, 13, 14 months ago, playing in college, and now he'll he'll be making his debut here this evening. Um, you know, weather willing. So you look at you look at the profile, and to me, the thing I've 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 said to folks that have asked and and I've said on this show a million times is every level he's gone up. That's from high school to college, college to lower minor leagues. In each level, there has been an, an initial adjustment period where he, like every human being ever that's gone up in difficulty, uh, you know, with the, with the, you know, the occasional like God-tier guys uh, that, that we've already referenced uh, as exceptions, he's struggled, then adjusted, then thrived. He's in the middle of doing that right now. So I expect a similar course of events. And that, to me, is why it makes sense to give him that a little bit extra room right before September 1st, give him a few games uh, up here to kind of get you know, used to the levels, to see the velocity and everything that comes with it. And then I expect him to to do very well. I mean, his minor league numbers were better than, say, Bryce Harper's uh, at now a smaller sample for Bryce. But at AAA, it wasn't like he was tearing the cover off the ball. And Mike Rizzo came and saw him play and he said, what took you so long? Right. Because he knew he belonged in the bigs. I'm not saying they're the same person or anything different. It's just it's not always a one-to-one indicator. You know, sometimes that he needs, you, you find out about a guy that he needs the lights on, needs the highest level. Who knows? We but also I, but, don't know about like all we can see when we go on to MILB.com or whatever, unless you're streaming the games like so many people are now with apps and watching Rochester, he might go 0 for 4 mm-hmm. and hit four balls 100 miles an hour. And, you know, three of those should have been hits and you know, maybe he could have had two doubles down the line and just missed the chalk or whatever, right? Maybe he hit a ball to the fence. There was a, a home run he had robbed, I know, a few weeks ago, as yeah. an example, deep on the warning track. And so the numbers are helpful enough, but they don't really mean a ton. But he's hitting 270 this year in the minors, which is very solid. The, the league batting average in the big leagues on average right now is 242. It's about that. It's a few points higher last time I checked in the minor leagues. But you're talking about 25 or so points above you know, league batting average, so to speak, in the minors. His OPS is almost 800, which is very, yeah. very good. He's hit for pretty legit power since he got bumped up to Rochester. Remember, Wilmington, the A-plus affiliate for the Nationals, and Harrisburg, their double-A affiliate, those are terrible ballparks on right-handed hitters from a power standpoint. So to get to Rochester, which plays a little more neutral, especially as the weather's warming up here, you've started to see the ball fly out of the yard for him more, more doubles, more homers. The big thing for me was early in the year, he was striking out a lot. Yep. And he's done a much better job as the season's gone on, cutting down on the strikeouts, the walks have come up. I think that is something that the Nats probably have to be very excited about as it pertains to determining that they're willing to give him a shot at the big league. Absolutely, yeah. And again, I, I, I expect... Uh, what happens to, to, to most guys when, when they get up here? Maybe it's going a little fast. And, and as you get some of that experience, you see some pitchers, maybe you go around the league one time, you build your book, you build your file, you get more comfortable at that level. And I expect him to do the same. He, is, he has adjusted and then thrived at every level of baseball he's been at. There's no higher one than this. I expect him, you know, to, again, to, to go through a couple of speed humps. Uh, there's that word again, speed humps instead of speed bumps. But go through some of those and come out clean on the other side because he's not a guy that's going to be beaten down by failure. He's not worried about it. The makeup is plus, plus, plus in that regard, right? He he knows he belongs up here. So an 0 for 12, a, a 1 for 22 is not going to change that in his mind. It's a chance, though, tonight, and I don't want to bury the lead, for what could be just a really cool fun night at the ballpark. Yeah. Like for baseball nerds and big Nats fans, if you were here for James Wood's debut, you know what I'm talking about. And is at bats. It was almost like the Scherzer 20 strikeout game. Everybody's on their feet. Every ball is a a loud ovation. Every strike is a universal uh, groan from from 20 plus thousand people that night. Sounds like they're going to have over 30,000 they're hoping this evening at this ball game uh, with some of the walk-up crowd they're anticipating with the crew's debut added to tickets already sold.